Tonight on Coyote News, we take a look at what the Vermilion Public Library has to offer students and find out how the Vermilion EMS program is looking to expand the community's understanding of life-saving techniques. I'm Michaela Feldman. And I'm Bailey Millen. With USD's spring break coming to a close, we look at how local businesses were affected without students for the week and find out how Dakotathon is gearing up for its annual 24-hour dancing event. Plus, even though the Coyote women's basketball team won't be advancing to the big dance, their tournament play continues this week. But first, the headlines with Taylor Fouth. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's right-wing Lukid party has scored a resounding victory in Israel's election. Today's final results showed a stunning turnaround after a tight race that had put its lengthy rule in jeopardy. After decades of debate, the U.S. Presbyterian Church will begin recognizing gay marriage as Christian in the church constitution. The redefinition was endorsed last year by the General Assembly, but required approval from a majority of the Louisville, Kentucky-based denominations, 171 regional districts. The critical 86 yes vote came last night from a New Jersey church. Kraft has announced it's recalling 240,000 boxes of macaroni and cheese, saying some of the boxes contain small pieces of metal. The boxes have best when used by dates ranging from September 18, 2015 through October 11, 2015, and are marked with the code C2. They were sold throughout the U.S., Puerto Rico, and in some countries in the Caribbean and South America. And those are your headlines. Recent events at a Rapi Rapid City hockey game where multiple Native American students were taunted and had alcohol thrown at them have brought the issue of racism against Native Americans to the forefront of South Dakota's attention. Lakota graduate student Alexis Oskolkoff says such discrimination exists all over the state, even at USD. Yeah, it, wasn't, it was hard to hear, but it wasn't surprising, especially from South Dakota. Oskolkoff says the Native American Cultural Center helps students deal with what she calls a daily struggle. For Native Americans like myself that come from a reservation where I'm used to being around people like myself and then having to live in a world where I'm different, I'm the minority. Oskolkoff urges any interested students to stop by the center which is open seven days a week. When it comes to getting information, many college students tend to rely on their campus library. But, as Coyote News' Mason Horacek reports, Vermilion also offers a second library that you can find right off of Main Street. When USD students think of the library in Vermilion, most think of the ID Weeks library. But the town has a public library that has many unique features. We do um, people's enjoyment, uh, self-help, entertainment, uh, group meetings. We do all the rest. So we're more like a community center, whereas the university is more like an academic center. In spring of 2013, the public library underwent a major remodel. The city of Vermilion provided $1.4 million, nearly doubling the size of the building. The Vermilion Public Library is located on 18 Church Street. I asked students if they know where the local library is. I always knew there was a public library in Vermilion. I just never felt got the time out of my day to go find it. I always thought there was, but I don't think I've ever been there or know where it is. We have a grief counseling group that meets here. We have an Alzheimer's group. We have the 4-H. We have Girl Scouts. We have Boy Scouts. We have book clubs. We have retired teachers this morning. Vermilion's public library provides service to everyone in the county. Reporting for Coyote News, I'm Mason Horacek. Congress Public Library holds weekly events for kids, teens, and adults. The Vermilion Community CPR program has been going since 2009, and now the group is making an effort to teach the public about life-saving skills. Coyote News' Anthony Gosh is live in the muck with John Weatherington to learn about why this program is important for students. Anthony? The EMS division teaches these classes, which could give you the ability to save someone's life. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. What is the importance of knowing CPR? Uh, CPR is a very important skill to learn, in my opinion. Uh, not many people know that actually CPR is used a lot. Um, it's averaged at 383,000 people every single year um, go down because of cardiac arrest. That averages to almost about 1,000 uh, thousand every day. And out of those, 88% of those are going to happen in your own home. Um, so if you're going to be doing CPR, most likely it's going to be on your mom 
mom, your dad, your grandma, or your grandpa. So, How can students and the community benefit from these classes? Um, so basically what we do at uh, Vermilion CPR, um, we offer you know the most up-to-date training um, because of the, uh, the American Heart Association um, through those classes there. Um, so basically you'll come in, um, it's like a three-hour class um, with a short little test at the end, uh, but it's a, it's a wonderful thing um, that, uh, that a lot of people in the community have learned. What other classes are provided by the EMS division? Um, so we offer a, what we call a, a healthcare providers class, so that's anybody that's a CNA or going into the medical field or something like that, or law enforcement officers. Um, we also offer heart saver courses, which is, it, it's pretty much the same, um, but it more focuses to the lay person, um, so somebody who's not obviously a healthcare provider. Um, that'll go also through your AED training, which there, there are a whole bunch of AEDs around campus. Um, and then we also offer a first aid class on special occasions. Well, thank you. The next class is on April 14th at the EMS Fire Station. Live from the Muck, I'm Anthony Gosh. Thanks, Anthony. Coming up after the break, following talks of guns on university property, we discuss campus safety. And with several closed businesses and empty lots in town, we take a look at Vermillion's economic state. Stay with us. With college students making up a large portion of Vermillion's consumer base, it's reasonable to wonder how local restaurants are affected by the decline in student population due to university breaks. Vermillion's Main Street is often visited by USD students, meaning some may expect a drop in sales over spring break. But Monica Iverson of Cafe Brulee noticed only a marginal decrease this year. So we've definitely seen a slight drop um, on the weekend, the first weekend of spring break. But then beginning on Monday, Tuesday, our numbers were actually above average. Leo's noticed a more significant drop in students, but not in local customers. Generally, we're a little bit slower. I mean, obviously, with all the students gone for spring break and going back home, we do lose kind of a bigger customer base that we have, you know, on our Friday and Saturday nights. During the week so much, we don't really notice it. Um, during the week is more kind of our regular towny crowd, I guess you could say. With students gone for spring break, both businesses saw a decline in sales over the weekends, but local members of the community kept sales up during the week. A gun bill in the South Dakota legislature was recently shot down after it proposed concealed carry on college campuses. It also brought up the topic of safety here at USD and how university police are reacting. University police say they make campus safety their number one priority. They're always patrolling whether on foot, bicycle, or car. Lieutenant Jeff Rice says they're ready for any situation. So we're prepared to do what we need to do, and um, we just react uh, to where it's, where it's at. We go and, uh, you know, we do what we need to do uh, when we get there. Last year, UPD and the Student Government Association walked around campus and took note of the areas that weren't well lit, so students can feel safer walking home at night. If students were to get into a bad situation, there are blue lights stationed around campus. Another walk is scheduled for UPD and the SGA for more improvements. Recently elected SGA President Sammy Zoss encourages students to feel at home while attending USD. However, some students are concerned how to feel at home in a town that they think isn't growing along with the university. While the town doubles its population when school is in session, Vermillion has seen numerous businesses close their doors. From restaurants to boutiques to a Dollar Tree, residents may question why these businesses struggled and if anything will replace them. 
City Manager John Prescott says they are focused on bringing additional businesses and housing to the town, but he says there are difficulties. It's a sometimes to bring new community, new businesses to town, uh, to get them to make the move. Um, so that's one of the things that we're we're facing right now is recruiting these companies and what it is that we can do that makes it an attractive place for them. Prescott says the city is embarking on the Prentice Park improvements. This would include a new swimming pool, basketball court, and a parking lot. Prescott says construction will begin in late summer. Coming up after the break, one of USD's largest philanthropic organizations is gearing up for their big event. And the theater department has started practices for their latest production. Stay with us. USD's media and journalism department can be seen and heard all over campus. Faculty members know that hands-on experience now is the key to success after college. Get professional experience by participating in one of the many practicums offered. Have your voice heard on the radio. Edit a promo for a campus organization. Investigate breaking news stories for a weekly newspaper. Design advertisements for local businesses. Get involved with the media and journalism department at USD and start your future now. Romeo and Juliet and Next to Normal were two of USD's theater department's productions this year. However, neither one of these plays were as large or costly as this semester's upcoming show. Auditions for Susicle the Musical were held in January, and members of the cast and crew are finishing up their second week of rehearsal. The musical is based on the works of Dr. Seuss, bringing many popular characters to life. The production is at theater department's largest this season, both in cast and budget. 32 people are part of the cast, including six children. Susicle the Musical will be held on April 16th through the 19th and the 22nd through the 27th. Spring break is over and the semester is winding down, but one group is geared up for their main event. On this week's Yote Report, Erica Arpan takes a look at how students are getting ready for the annual Dakotathon. Throughout the year, Dakotathon and all the participants have a set goal that they fundraise for. Proceeds from different businesses around Vermilion go to Dakotathon. Chrissy Zalad, the co-morale chair, says they hold plenty of events throughout the year. We do pancake feeds, which um, I think are always crowd pleasers. We had a Christmas themed one this year, and of course Santa made an appearance with his elves and a Christmas tree. Students involved table in the muck and hold events like Mocha Mondays where part of the proceeds are donated. Donations from the event go towards the Children's Miracle Network. Joey Snyder, a co-morale chair, says the children involved with Dakotathon are the stars of the event every year. The miracle children that commit to coming. We have like a big procession, like we all make a tunnel with our arms, they all run through, and it's kind of like a big welcome to USD type thing. Throughout the 24 hours, participants and the Miracle Kids have a full schedule of events. They start in the muck and move toward different places around Vermilion for activities that include inflatables, dancing, and fireworks. The kids typically stay throughout the day and go home later in the night, and then return in the morning. Towards the end of the night, they have a vigil to remember those who have lost the fight to cancer. Just straight 24 hours. Um, just try to have as much fun as you can in a day. The 2015 Dakotathon will start the morning of Saturday, April 18th. For the Yote Report, I'm Erica Arpan. Before students took off for the spring break vacation, the USD Music Department held their Winter Symphony Concert in the Fine Arts Building. The orchestra is made up of high school students, USD students, and even alumni. The group is led by conductor Dr. Rick Rungsted. The symphony concluded the evening's performance with the USD alma mater. The event serves as an open invite to the public with free admission, where people are welcome to enjoy an evening of music. USD students returned from spring break on Monday, and many came back with suntans and even some interesting stories. On this week's Kyle blog, Andy Hartman gives us her version of spring break. Spring break is over and I'm sad. Not just because we have to go back to our classes and we actually have to do stuff, but because I have to hear about how awesome everyone's spring break was. I keep seeing pictures of my friends at the beach or on a cruise or going skiing or at Disney World. Everyone seemed to go on these long and fantastic journeys. Well, I also went on a long and fantastic journey, if you consider the trek from the couch to the kitchen long and fantastic. 
which I guess it was because that journey resulted in me getting microwaved waffles. But I am now looking back at all the amazing things I did over spring break, all from the comfort of my hometown. I went surfing while standing on a stingray in outer space. Okay, I played Super Mario Galaxy on the Wii, but if it wasn't for me, Mario would have totally fallen off that stingray and then he would have never gone the Power Star and saved Princess Peach. I am a hero. You might have gotten a nice tan, but I saved the universe. I also helped my sister pet sit for our friends and I fed a carrot to their guinea pig. So I had some pretty awesome adventures myself. And by adventures, I mean naps, but let's be honest, they're basically the same thing. For Coyote Blog, I'm Andy Hartman. Thanks, Andy. Coming up after the break, both men's and women's basketball teams fell to SDSU at the Summit League Tournament, but the women's tournament play still continues this week in the Dome. Stay with us. Tonight on Coyote Sports, the Coyote men's and women's basketball teams both fall in the Summit League Conference Tournament. Plus, the men's and women's golf teams compete in Nevada. And in the Bower Beat, Sean gives you some advice on your March Madness brackets. I'm Brian Noel. And I'm Sean Bauer. Coyote News' Levi Goots is live with Grayson Herding to talk about her finish at the Zone Diving Championships and find out who the Coyotes will be playing for the upcoming football season. But first, the headlines. Taylor? Three Morgan State football players were stabbed outside a dining hall Tuesday afternoon, leaving one player in serious condition. None of the injuries sustained were considered life-threatening, and police have taken the suspect into custody. The stabbing is the third violent instance to occur at Murray State in the past week, including another stabbing and multiple fights at a party. San Francisco 49ers linebacker Chris Borland announced his retirement from the NFL after playing just one season. Borland says his concern over the long-term impact of head-related trauma was the main reason for his retiring. Borland was one bright spot for the 49ers' disappointing season last year, but joins fellow 49er linebacker Patrick Willis in retirement, who announced his retirement earlier this month. Oklahoma City Thunder forward Sergi Baca will miss an estimated four to six weeks after undergoing an arthroscopic knee procedure on Tuesday. Ibaka becomes the third major player for the Thunder to miss extended time due to injury. All-star guard Russell West Westbrook missed 15 games earlier this season, and reigning MVP Kevin Durant has missed 40 games due to injury as well. And those are your headlines. The USD women's basketball team couldn't defend their Summit League title as they fell to rival SDSU in the Summit League Conference Tournament Championship, 72-57. The Coyotes made only four of their 30 shots in the first half and never could recover from their 18-point halftime deficit. The Jackrabbits were led by Macy Miller's 19 points as they secured the Summit League's automatic NCAA bid. The women's season isn't over, though as they received an automatic bid into the women's NIT by winning the Summit League regular season title. The Coyotes will host Creighton at 7 tomorrow night at the Dakota Dome. The Hoodie Allen concert has been moved to 9, so students can attend both events. The men's basketball season ended at the hands of their rival SDSU as they lost 78-65 in the Summit League semifinals. The Jackrabbits' DeAndre Park scored a game-high 21 points, including making three of SESU's 11 three-pointers in the game. Tyler Larson led USD with 19 points and 10 rebounds, and fellow senior Brandon Boss added 12 in their final collegiate games. The Coyotes finished with an above 500 record for the first time in four years. And head coach Craig Smith was named a finalist for the top first-year head coach in the NCAA. 
Four South Dakota swimmers and divers were named to the Summit League Swimming and Diving Academic All-League teams this week, including sophomore Grayson Herding. She also competed in last week's NCAA Zone Diving Championships in Iowa City. And now Coyote News' Levi Goots is live with Herding to talk about the season. Levi? Thanks, John. Herding was one, the only diver from this area, to, from the Summit League, to join the NCAA tournament. Thank you so much for being with us. So how would you say this season has gone as a, as a team this year? I think we did amazing this season. We worked really hard to try to get where we are, and it, I think it came out at conference. We got fourth which was better than last year, I believe, so it was exciting. And then individually, how would you say that your season went uh, from your experience? I was really happy with how this season turned out. Like I said, I work really hard for my results, and hopefully it continues. And then you made it to the Academic All uh, Summit League. Uh, what are the requirements that are there for you to make it into that? I actually just learned this today, so we're lucky. You have to have above a 3.4 and place top eight in the Summit League. And then they put you in a pool and they decide. I don't know how they decide that, but they vote and it worked out. And then, so you're only a sophomore, so what can you say is going to happen uh, from now on or for the next few years? Continue what I'm doing, keep working hard, and hope that it continues because I'm excited. Thank you so much. Herding has 27 individual victories this semester and the Summit League Diving MVP. Live from the Muck, I'm Levi Goots. Thanks, Levi. Earlier this week, the USD men's and women's golf teams were in Nevada competing at the three-day SDSU Jackrabbit Classic. Sophomore Brennan Lervik shot a final round 72 to tie for first place at four under par in the women's tournament. Abby Dufresne was the next highest USD golfer, finishing in a tie for 26th place, and the Coyote women finished seventh out of 11 teams at the meet. For the men, Sam Matthew and Cody Seal finished tied for 26th place at four over par for the tournament, and the USD men tied for 11th place out of 15 teams. Both men's and women's teams compete next at the Bradley Spring Invite on April 3rd. The Coyote football team's schedule has been released. The Coyotes will hold their season opener against Kansas State on September 5th and a home opener against Drake. This game will also be the Missouri Valley Conference opener for the Coyotes. The Dakota Days game will host Youngstown State. In this week's Bauer Beat, Sean shares his bracket picks for March Madness. Tomorrow, the greatest sporting event in the world officially begins as the NCAA tournament gets underway. Everyone has been filling out their brackets, but first listen to my potential bracket busters before you finalize your picks. Now, obviously, I have Kentucky winning along with just about everyone else, but the key to winning your bracket is to pick the correct upsets. My top bracket busters this year are Michigan State, Buffalo, and the winner of the Texas Butler game. Michigan State isn't as strong as they normally are, but as a seven seed, they can cause some damage with a potential upseat, upset of second seed of Virginia. Virginia is slumping right now, having lost more games in the past week than they did the rest of the year. Plus, they're a defensive team, so scoring could be a problem for them. Then there's Buffalo, who's a 12 seed, and every year at least one 12 seed beats a 5 seed, and Buffalo is my pick this year, as they face an overrated West Virginia team in the first round. Now, Buffalo played Kentucky tough earlier this year, and that gives them the team to make some noise in the tourney, in my opinion. And finally, the winner of the Texas and Butler game. I don't know who I'm picking here yet, but the winner will go to the Sweet 16. Texas has talent galore, and Butler is the classic bracket buster, so this prediction is more of a gut feeling than anything. But no matter how your bracket turns out, though, I hope you all enjoy sitting on the couch over the weekend, watching basketball all day as I plan to. And that's the Bauer Beat. Thanks, Sean. Coming up next on this week's Couch Shorts, we bring you a talk show with an artist who says he should be taking Hoodie Allen's place for this week's spring concert. Stay with us. Latino Student Organization is a all-inclusive student organization that focuses on bringing in Latino culture to University of South Dakota. We do fiestas, we do piñata parties, we also just hold potlucks where we cook and we 
just share Latino culture and food and just mingle. The month of March means one thing for many basketball enthusiasts, March Madness. But what about people who don't have an interest in sports? On this week's Out and About, we asked students if they plan on participating in March Madness. I like to watch it, but I don't know who wins. I'm going to do a bracket with my friends. Of course I'm going to participate. Is that through the muck? Is that? No. Nope. Okay. Then no. I don't even know what that is. Um, I don't. I probably not. That's basketball, right? I'm not super into it, so. Yes, filling out brackets and stuff, winning money. Well, I like to watch a lot of the games just because I'm a big basketball fan, but I'm a girl and I have no idea how to work a bracket, so I'm not going to try to make my own. I'm not, actually. I'm really busy that week, so. Uh, definitely, probably filling out some brackets uh, online or if there's any groups around here that would be willing to do that. I'm not very smart when it comes to basketball and uh, predetermining the outcome of certain games. I'm just going to be supporting my Jayhawks because they're going to win it, obviously. Well, that's the basketball thing, correct? I don't like basketball, so I won't be. But I think it's a nice thing for other people. No, I don't necessarily understand how it works. I really like basketball, but March Madness confuses me. In this week's edition of Kyle Shorts, we bring you a talk show with with an artist who says he should be taking Hoodie Allen's place for this week's spring concert. Hello, this week on The Daily Dentist, we will have young rap star Lil Nemo on, and we'll be talking to him about how he was not chosen for the USD spring concert. So I hear you were the runner-up for the USD Spring Concert. So yeah, I was, I was really looking forward to uh, performing at the USD School for the Spring Concert, and then uh, I was really uh, disappointed to hear that they chose that uh, wannabe uh, Hoodie Allen in front of me, you know? Why do you think you should have been chosen over Hoodie Allen? Well, I could sit here and tell you how my lyrics are better, my music is better, but you know, when it comes right down to the whole facts, the only way I can really show you is by actually showing you. Here's little Nemo, put all your haters in chemo. Yeah, you know I'm the best. So and so far, I ain't in the net. Yeah, yeah, I play ball at the end of this verse, giving all your girlfriends a call. All right, well, I guess that's all the time we have this week on the Daily Dentist. Uh, make sure you tune in next week, and we'll have the third runner up to the USD Spring Concert, Iggy Azalea. Officials on the Norwegian Arctic island of Svalbard are discouraging last-minute visitors for a rare solar eclipse next week. They're warning that hotels are full, it will be freezing cold, and polar bears are on the prowl. A total eclipse will sweep across the Atlantic on Friday, but from land it will only be visible from Svalbard and the Fario Islands. They're expecting 1,500 visitors for the eclipse on top of about 2,500 residents. And the mayor of Svalbard's main settlement says the islands have reached a maximum safe limit. It's the first total eclipse on the island since 1954. A media and journalism student advertising group is planning a department mixer for next Tuesday evening in the Muck Pit Lounge. Coyote Communication is inviting all faculty and other student organizations in the department to showcase the opportunities they have to offer. All students interested in learning about the new classes, majors, and minors offered are welcome to attend the event at 5 o'clock. That's all for Coyote News. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and Instagram. We'll leave you with some photos we've received from USD student spring break travels. Have a great night. We'll see you next time.